News tonight that the police could use live ammunition against arsonists, but only as a last resort to save a life. That's the suggestion of a police review of tactics used during this summer's riots in England. Earlier I was joined by James Dellingpole, a blogger for The Telegraph, who was in our studio, central London studios, and Professor Gus John, a founder of the Moss Side Defence Committee. I asked the professor first of all why he felt the report's recommendations were, as he put it, dangerous. We are in an inner city in an urban environment now where for the last 20 years or so there's been a massive supply of guns into the hands of young people. Um, if you encourage the police to start shooting at people, I think you are also risking the possibility of young people shooting at the police. Now, in the Northern Ireland situation, there was clearly a military operation um, the, the IRA and, 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 and those other people were, were in some military confrontation. The state is not in a military confrontation with its citizens. And it seems to me, therefore, that one, what one should be looking at is how the community and the police engage in such a manner that you do not have these things happening. These, these riots, as they're called, are not inevitable. Um, and even if one says, okay, it's sheer criminality, the question is, if people had that dis disposition to criminality, why did they not simply get up and riot long before the Mark Duggan killing and all the events that followed? Okay, well, let's get the thoughts of James Dellingpole on the uh, prospect of, of um, mm. police taking tougher action. What, what do you think? Um, I wonder whether had plastic bullets and water cannon being available to the police during the summer riots, it would have made the blindest bit of difference. Uh, I think those riots were a failure of police policy, not a failure of lack of equipment. We had ranks of police standing idly by while the mobs uh, destroyed, first of all, police cars and then started attacking passers-by. They started setting fire to property. They started setting fire to department stores. The police did nothing for the first day. And I think that's, that sent out a signal to uh, the, the miscreants all around the country that they could riot with impunity. They could so what, sorry, what, what do you think they should have been doing then? You're, you're saying that water cannon and plastic bullets wouldn't have made the I'm difference. What would have they done? Should have, they should have gone in harder, faster, earlier. Definitely. That would have been the first thing. I think. The police need to ask themselves, is our job to act as diversity outreach consultants? Is our job to make the homosexual community feel that we are unhomophobic? Or is it actually to protect the life and property of law-abiding citizens? Once the police have decided that it is, in fact, the latter, then I think we should, should give them whatever uh, means they need to police the country effectively, up to and including water cannons, at water cannon and plastic bullets. Yes, I think there will be a repeat of these riots, and I think if the police don't clamp down a little hard next time, they are going to be much, much worse. And um, Professor Gustjohn, I mean that is the job of the police, isn't it? Protecting people and their property. And, and in doing that, don't they have to take every measure possible to ensure that that that, that, that the law is upheld? I mean, I know that you were saying that you. Um, think that there were ways of pre preventing those riots in the first place because of p police relations with the community. But once a situation does get out of hand, should the police take every necessary measure to, to get it back under control? Well, <clears throat> let me see now what I said during these, these uh, unhappy events in the summer. Um, prior to the 6th of August 2011, uh, hundreds of young people had been murdered by one another with guns that were freely available in the community. Um, I didn't see the government taking anything like the action they've taken since these events in August. In other words, what message is it sending out to the country that year on year you're having in London alone an average of 27 young people dead at the hands of people like themselves? I, I hear what you're saying, but no, I mean, but, it's but, not but, sort but, of... But, it's but, not, but, no, no, it's, it's an important point. Mm. If Dennis O'Connor is, is saying in this report, um, People, the police should be able to fire at citizens if there is somebody in danger, etc. The question is, why is it that a certain section of the population are considered to be dispensable so that no action is taken in relation to them, but on an issue such as this, caused, let me say, by the police and the way the police the community, it is being suggested that you should use 
you should use live rounds or baton rounds against against rioters. Okay, well let's let's get the thoughts of James Dunningpoll on what you're saying. I'd say there's an order of difference between uh, drugs gangs shooting at each other and killing each other, and and mobs who are motivated by little more than, than greed and boredom, going out and looting and rioting and hurting people and destroying property. Uh, there is an absolute difference there. And of course the police's priority should be to protect law-abiding citizens. Yeah, it would be nice if they could stop gangs shooting at each other as well, but that is not the same, the same issue. The, the, you know, it is not an issue that we should deal with the, it, the same intensity. You know, the police well, to is job is to protect you, you law-abiding citizens. But no, you try telling that to the mothers and fathers of all of those young children who've been killed in the last two decades. Well, what do you mean it's not the same order of, of priority? Are you suggesting that the lives of young people are less valuable than that I of think property the going up in smoke? I think the everything they can to, to take the guns off these people and, and, and to stop, stop gang warfare happening. But if you can't see a difference between gangs ki killing each other and gangs attacking uh, innocent passers-by, you know, I think that, that there is a difference. Well, James Sterlingpoel, what about the argument, though, that if you... Um, start to see a situation where police actually do fire back, it does give uh, the green light effectively on, on people who might have a, a weapon in their pockets to I use it and that. fire at the police. It could escalate the, I, the problems. I, I love that line, that the, the, the bad guys have got guns, therefore the police shouldn't do anything in case the bad guys turn even nastier. That's, that's a recipe, that's a, that's a council of despair, that is. But, but it, it isn't, you see, because in that report it is being suggested that, for example, when you use these what we used to call batten rounds, you'd aim at the buckle of, of whoever it is creating the, the, the disturbance. That, that's nonsensical. How can you be so precise? Nobody would stand still and say, here I am, take aim, shoot at my buckle. It's, it's nonsense. Well, so, Gus, what is, what is your solution? You've got, you know, the, if there's one thing that I emerged from the riots, it's that these were not like the Brixton riots. These were not riots of social deprivation. They were not riots against a, 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 a heavy-handed police. These were very, very bored, okay. mischievous kids out, out for, 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 to do bad let things me, let me tell for you, the hell of it. Yes, let me, let me tell you what my solution would be. My solution would be first to remember that many of those young people themselves reacted and act, were proactive when they discovered that there were people in the buildings that were being burnt. Some of those so-called rioters themselves. We must remember that. Secondly, let's do something about the number of them who are unemployed, who have no hope, who have a future of futility, and who want to engage meaningfully with the community. Okay. So how do we then get them to feel that they have a stake in the communities in which they live and can actually work in such a manner that they are able to organize themselves meaningfully yes. and have jobs. We're, and we're almost were out of time. Let's just right get a quick about final thought from James They were not about social deprivation. They were just kids out. There, there were protests against by the kids who hadn't got enough trainers and hadn't got enough flat screen TVs. And they soon remedied that one, didn't they? James Dernipole of The uh, Telegraph and uh, Professor Gus John, a founder of the Moss Side Defence Committee, talking to me earlier.